Did you know about this, Chrissy, that John is taking a break from podcasting? No. So what he did was on November 1st, he said he was going to have like a Kardashian on or something, which, you know, he was just trolling people. And he's like, well, the Kardashian postponed, but instead of really fun, three funny people you're going to love. And then he just played Three Stooges. He never hmm. went on, just played Three Stooges. Is he taking a month stuff. off to like... Wash all his clothes, wait for his bruises to go away, <laughs> like exfoliate. Take no, he's going to gonna start spa. doing some serious drinking and all this podcast. He's going to get in the way of it. <laughs> Maybe he'll come back in a month looking svelte and healthy. Could Maybe he's going to do a detox. That'd be, that'd be, I'd be amazed if that were the case. Yeah, there is speculation online. that <laughs> Maybe he's going to get his place fumigated for bugs. Well, I did see a lot of speculation. Some people think that uh, he's going to be making the move with, into uh, his mother's house. Uh, ah. He's selling his apartment in Canoga Park to move back uh, to Long Island. Um, I don't know if that's the case or not. I, I think, this is my humble opinion, he's tried every which way to try to thwart the troll, <coughs> surely the trolls, from the trolls. getting clips of his show. Mm. So he took down all of his YouTube channel. That's what he's been doing over the last month. Mm. Wow. And now he's got this new idea. Check out this. This is brilliant. Yeah, baby. Welcome to the world. Famous stuttering John. <laughs> Let me just point out real quick, because there's stains all over his shirt. And oh, I, I think that he's trying to lean into the joke now. I could be wrong. He might be this disheveled. But the last few episodes, he's wearing his shirt backwards. Sure. He's kind of like trying to be, he shaved his yeah, the mustache, mustache trick. in half and then yeah. the other half. I think he's trying to be quirky now to get people like talking about him. The thing on his microphone. Right. So I'm not buying it. Yeah. I'm not buying the stains on his shirt, but it also is possible. I'm not buying the forced quirkiness. Right. Yeah. It's too obvious <laughs> for yeah, him. A little too fun. On podcast, beer on the balcony edition. As you know, I've been posting different links. Why? Because some assholes on my Patreon have been posting the links and giving it out for free. They think they irritate me. They don't. <laughs> I don't give a frog's fat ass. But they must love this show. You can't say that I'm doing this thing so that they can't post the links anymore. I sent out fake links and fuck them up. And I don't even care if they do post the links to the show. Yeah. Those two things don't compute. There's In the same sentence. Cognitive it, dissonance going yeah. on. I don't give a frog's <laughs> fat ass. Please stop posting it. <laughs> so since this episode, he has posted. So where was this? What this secret? channel is this on oh well yeah i know go figure he still has to put out the link at some point so people can watch it yeah. so it's not like it's like fuck i can only click two links a day he got me uh, i'll it's try the third one get. too oh there it is there we go okay so john put out on his patreon he goes no one's gonna be charged uh we're taking a break we'll be back in january of 2023 now again that could be a misdirection oh, we so don't two know months he's, yes he's saying that he's taking off the next two months I just, no John November sounds better than no John December. So I just, that's why I said it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so John brings on his guest. This introduction is something else. Chrissy, you can only hope that one day you'll be on a show and this is how you'll be introduced. He has a special place in my heart. Why? Because when I decided I wanted to start doing stand up comedy, I saw this person not only perform in the K-Rock comedy contest, but win. <laughs> he win. <laughs> but, and but win. He won the comedy contest. He came in first place. <laughs> he had the best score. Not only was he in the contest, he win. Yeah. And he and he win? And he won a comedy and contest. He beat, it. He beat is what everybody. He, just said. <laughs> he said smugly. <laughs> <laughs> the K like Rock he, comedy like contest. Could credit. you imagine? <laughs> oh, guys, today, very special treat for you. Chrissy Mayer, she won a radio comedy contest once <laughs> in the 80s. <laughs> Let's bring her on. <laughs> uh, poor John. Very impressive. And then he goes on to say that he, when he watched this guy do stand up, he got advice from this guy on how to do stand up. 
and this guy instructed John on how to do stand up. I wouldn't want that credit. No. This is the guy who taught me how to do stand up. <laughs> <laughs> let's, yeah, let's keep that on the DL, buddy. Come on. All right, so now he finally brings on Joey Cola. I know we've all been anticipating who's going to be the next guest on Beer on the Balcony. Is it going to be Betty Loco? Is it going to be Mark B? No. Joey Cola. Here's the guy who taught me about hygiene. Oh, I like Joey Cola. He's really <laughs> so, funny. So, without further ado, from Belmore, Long Island. I used to date a girl from Belmore. She was dumb as a wall. I called her a Belmoron. But, without oh, further ado, Joey Cola, everybody. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you, Joey. <laughs> hey, where Joey's are you? so He's funny. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing good. Look, look how good I look. Look, look. <laughs> he looks like a guy who goes on shows a lot. It's <laughs> real comfortable like with that. He got stung by some bees, Joey Cola. <laughs> yeah. His eyes are usually more open. He goes on to explain why he looks the way he looks, uh, so I won't spoil that one for you. reaction or something? Okay. But. It's interesting because this guy has had a career in comedy. I, I'm, I was actually surprised that you know who this was, Chrissy. He's so funny. Yeah, I've done shows okay. with him. Oh, okay. I, I was wondering because he's, he's, he's a New York guy, so I was wondering if maybe a, you'd cross paths. Yeah, he's a Long Island guy mostly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, well, genuinely funny. This is this is what makes this guy so interesting, right here. You know, so I'm 61. My wife and I are married 35 years, and. To be honest with you, I like to eat a good meal, watch Wheel of Fortune, and just go to bed and just hang out with my wife. Now I did it all. I did, I did it all. I know everybody. I did it all, you know. And that's and that's it. He's done it all. Yeah. And what else is there to do? Wheel of Fortune, dinner, Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was actually going to ask you about supper, but that's coming up later in the show. <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> so are you fucking? <laughs> Thirty-one years. I know he didn't ask him that. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right, so then John has to tell his guest about his trolls and about oh, how, course. yeah, and about how he's thwarting his trolls. Oh, John! Uh, oh, my son's texting me. Sorry. Uh, All right, so I'm going to pause wait, it there. Go ahead, Chris. Isn't the son a daughter now? Well, he does have a son. He has two oh. sons. Oh, he okay. has two sons and a daughter. I keep getting that confused. I'm not trying to fuck with John. I really don't care about no. his kids. I don't pay attention to him at all. I know other people are interested in him. Like, John can't shut up about his kids, but I don't really care. But this is where people get suspicious of John because he's distracted and he says, oh, my son just texted me. But then listen to what he says right after that. It makes me think that he's lying about that. Uh, oh, my son's texting me. Sorry. Uh, yeah, well, the guy... You know, these guys love this show, so they post it. So the guy finally has figured out the – because I, I sent out two two fake links so I could have this guy fucking scrambling all over to yeah. try and get the real one. See, what you're talking about now is even Greek to me. I don't know what the links – I don't know where you're going, how you send out I don't know thing, what links Patreon, are. <laughs> and all of this stuff. I have no idea what any of that is. Yeah, it's Greek to everyone. So what I do is people who pay me money, I send them fake links so they can't I find my show. <laughs> that's into not watching the show. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, that's confusing to me, too. Uh, don't feel bad there, Joey. It's kind of stupid. But why would John... I have people who pay me money, and I want to confuse them into <laughs> I quitting. Yeah, I don't want them finding the show. Why would John say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. My son's texting me. Yeah, yeah, I guess they found the link. Is his son telling him that the trolls found the link? What? What's the right. connection there? It doesn't make any fucking sense. So yeah, I was confused. Good point. I was confused by that. Okay. So now I'm going to explain why I don't know who the fuck Joey Cola is. And I'm going to give myself a pass on this one. And then I got a bunch of heat. And then I uh, I did the cruise ships for a while. Almost had a nervous breakdown on the cruise ships. And then my wife said, no more cruise ships. Why? I did have a... <laughs> so so caring and compassionate. <laughs> and then I was having a nervous breakdown. Why? He's smiling. I know. I know. Tell me about your breakdown. <laughs> yeah. Were I the trolls? Feel better. Yeah. Were the trolls uh, on the cruise ship? Was it the trolls? Did the trolls <laughs> follow you onto the cruise ship? Yeah. So he was a cruise ship comic for a while before that got to be too much for him. Which I'll spoil it for you in case you were planning on watching this episode, which um, I don't think a lot of people were. This is my transformative content, after all. 
But it goes on to say that he's so good on the cruise ships <laughs> that he would be on there for a week, and then they wanted him for two weeks, and they wanted him for four weeks, and he's got a growing family and young children at home, and he got overwhelmed. I was just thinking, like, well, you could just tell him he can't work 28 days straight if you want, yeah. you know? That would probably be the solution. But, hey, what do I know? I'm not a cruise ship comic. I don't Maybe plan on being one. Maybe he on his wife on a cruise ship. Ah, interesting. And that's Because what would be the reason to never do it again? Dude, holy shit. I didn't even think about that angle of it. You know how many like, women when are I looking work too for... much, Frank is just like, oh, yeah, now we know I can't be gone for two straight weeks. Like, next trip, I'll be gone 10 days or something. But he wouldn't say, don't go on the road anymore. Well, that's interesting because I never thought about that. On a cruise ship, you have all these women who are looking for U.S. citizenship, yes. right? Oh, shit. And they're dr- all drunk and they want that D. Well, I'm talking about the employees, but... Oh. I, well, I mean, they also might be that. drunk, too. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I did see Titanic. Um, all right. This is... Now I want to be a cruise ship comic. <laughs> I know, right? Now it's starting to make a little bit of sense. So then he says, after the cruise ship thing, his wife made him stop doing that. He was Rosie O'Donnell's warm-up person. And John has to explain to his audience what a warm-up person is, because we don't know that, John. C- Captain Showbiz is going to explain to us. When there's a live audience... You know, I used to do that for the Leno show. I was the warm-up guy. I'm like, oh, God. Anyway, he goes on this list of shows that he was the warm-up guy for. So, again, the reason why I wouldn't know who he is, because he's just entertaining studio audiences for TV shows. And then he goes on to say, America's Got Talent. I was the warm-up guy for AGT back when Howard Stern was on that. Now, America's Got Talent films out of L.A. until Howard Stern got the job. Then they moved the whole operation to New York for Howard. And John... Mentioned he knew this guy from him winning a K Rock comedy contest. So this is a really dumb question out of Centering John's mouth. I did the uh, the the, uh, the AGT years when Howard was there because Gary called me and said Howard wants me there to be there. So I did that at Radio City. How did Howard know who you were? <laughs> John, <laughs> Howard is the reason why you were on K Rock. I noticed he's not smiling anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, Howard <laughs> Howard requested you. <laughs> what does the request be? Did he lose my number? <laughs> Did he give you popcorn? What a fucking idiot. So this guy goes on to explain that, well, because I, I was on that K-Rock contest. That's how you and I met, too, John. Remember? Yep. Like, yeah. Remember I, the intro? I, 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 know, I know the people on <laughs> the Howard Stern show back in the day. I'm like, holy shit, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> so what they keep talking about, the reason why he won that contest is because of this Bob Ross bit he used to do. That's the painter, right? I almost said Jeff Ross. Mm -hmm. Bob Ross, the painter guy. And so this guy, Joey Cole, are you familiar with this bit, by the way, Chrissy? Mm, What bit is it? I I don't know, because John was trying to find it before the show. He tries to find it during the show. They're constantly trying to find this bit, because John wants to show off, oh, you're going to love this bit. And this is... uh, It's a bit of Joey's? Yes, this is one of Joey's bits where he pretends to be Bob Ross, and I guess it kills. Oh, no, I know a bit of his where he pretends to be, like, I think a parrot or something, or a, or a cat. That's, uh, but I don't think I know this bit. Bob Ross is not a cat or a parrot. He was a man, okay. Chrissy. <laughs> don't disrespect I Bob know. Ross. Happy trees. <laughs> I knew Bob Ross. Happy trees, exactly. <laughs> so this is, I, I love John, because he's constantly... You know, we were talking about uh, multitasking when we were on the content house. John cannot multitask at all. So as soon as he gets distracted with one task, he just ignores his guest. And his guest is going on and on. And there might be some interesting anecdotes going on. But John is not even listening. And and George Collin and I became good friends. Uh, We would actually talk on the phone. And I don't want to say that I wrote for George Collin, but we would... We would run bits together and stuff and have conversations, and some of them wound up in his act, as well as some of his stuff winding up in my act. Is there wow. any place that I could find it? I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't even know. I don't know where you'd go to, to see it. He's talking nah, about being friends with George I'm, Carlin. I thought, I, would, I thought for sure it's out there. Everything else is out there. Yeah, everything else is out there. I mean, but I don't, I don't know. I can't even find it myself. Yeah, his wife's tenderizing chicken in the fucking kitchen next door. <laughs> so that's annoying. And then you got this guy talking about how, like, yeah, I kind of wrote some of George Carlin's bits. You know, we used to talk on the phone all the time. The question is, oh, w- which bits? We all know Carlin's bits. Which ones? That's amazing. Yes. Instead, it's like, uh, where the fuck is this thing I've been looking for? Figure out before the show whether or not you're going to be able to find the video you want or not. Once the video starts, that ship has sailed. Yep. Move on. 
If you want to talk about it, explain it, great. But he's continuing to look for it and fucking up what could have been an interesting conversation. Which it sounds like what you're describing, Carl, is show prep. It's is it's called show prep. And then Chrissy, what you want to do is if you don't do show prep, you pretend that you did hmm. by saying, Yeah, I was gonna play that bit, but that's not important. Explain hmm. to us what that did for you, or you know, mm-hmm. just make it seem like you didn't even want to do that instead of going, Yeah, yeah, yeah George Carlin Schmarlin. Uh, where's the link? Do you have a link to this fucking thing? You fucking idiot. <laughs> All right. So then this is a really funny thing. Joey pays John a compliment. John is not used to this. <laughs> he does not know. Wait, what? Not- <laughs> I haven't had a reason to clap yet. <laughs> you look good, man. You're, you're morphing into an old comedy, uh, an old mafia don. Is what you, that's what you look like now. Look like you're playing mafia. Do you see how John wasn't sure how to take that? Yeah, he's, you look good. He's, he's like, like oh, where is this going? Yeah, he's waiting for the other shoe to drop. <laughs> yeah, where is this going? You look good. I'll fucking murder you and your family. What, yeah. what, did, you, what did you just say to me? Because <laughs> John's looking at himself while this guy's going, do you look good? He's like, uh. Yeah. <laughs> he's already texting denim guy with a cane. <laughs> <laughs> you know what to do. Yeah. Because I know some trolls who could use the cement blocks right about now. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So. Now we're, they're going to talk about this is John Glory Days, his band, what he was in back when he was on the Howard Stern show. I guess this guy was saying he looked just like Anthony Kiedis with the long hair, and he gave him the idea of doing an Under the Bridge parody that I guess John performed on stage or something. Anyway, none of that matters. I'm just setting up this next hilarious joke. And you had a band. You yeah. had Rubber Beaver at that point, right? Yeah, Rubber Beaver. Yeah. Yeah, that's the name of your band. Howard loved that name. He oh, would plug God. it and just laugh. Everybody Rubber Beaver. Did. Yeah, it was great. Psst, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's great about that joke? Howard would laugh at it. That's how I know it was a good joke. <laughs> so, Chrissy, Rubber Beaver's pretty good. I used to be in a band called Finger Her and Her Pussy, which wasn't as subtle, but also a great band name. <laughs> And then you went on to the Isotoners, my favorite type of glove. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> He's so proud of himself, Rubber Beaver. Oh, yeah, Howard would laugh. Everyone, Jackie. Yeah. Oh, name all the uh, people who would laugh at that, John. Fred, Gary. The we list got goes it. on. Yeah, we got it. Telling people that more famous people who have laughed at their jokes. That's so cringe. <laughs> oh, God. How many times has he talked about Obama laughing at one of his bits? Oh, no. Obama doesn't know who the fuck Stuttering John is. <laughs> I promise you that. Obama's not a fucking so dabbler. Funny. made Big Mike get a little hard. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine Barack being in the Dabblers Anonymous subreddit? <laughs> uh, uh, Michelle, get over here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got to see the latest from oh. B-Dabbler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is uh, so now we're gonna get into Joey why he looks like garbage. That's what Chrissy was pointing out earlier. Apparently, he's had some health issues. This is what we all have to look forward to. Everyone who's not uh, sixty-one years old yet. So, Uh-oh. you know, and I'm sixty-one now. I got I had Bell's palsy on this side five years uh-huh. ago, and then I got it on this side two years ago. Well, I got I two like stents, and I just had my appendix out. I'm I'm taking a physical beating, you know. So. But the, the Bell's Palsy, you really can't tell, right? You can't All tell. right, I think sleep. we found it. <laughs> Joey, thanks oh to my, my great God. fucking moderator, <laughs> Andrew Brower. Doesn't give a fuck about double Bell's Palsy. <laughs> this poor That's guy. That's like one of the worst things you can get. It's like it's, your whole yeah. face droops. And he's lucky to have had it on both sides, so it's evened out. And he looks Good better point. than John. Yeah. yeah. Somehow he looks better than John. He could not have given a fuck about that whole story. Wow. Once again, John cannot possibly listen with one ear to his guest even just to pick up some keywords just so you could be like oh yeah bell's policy that sucks all right i think i found the video we're looking for he's so preoccupied with the chat and what people are doing because i guess andrew the great andrea brower found this video well, for the kind of ocd i have makes me rude <laughs> <laughs> it makes me bad at hosting a, a talk show i'm not an asshole i just don't care <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> All right, let me back that up again. Now that we know that John's ignoring him this whole time, he's explaining poor all of these. Joey. I know, this poor guy. Oh, and then I got it on this side two years ago. I got two stents in. I just had my appendix out. Look at John's eyes. They're just darting back and forth. He's just staring at his chat. I'm, I'm taking a physical beating, you know? So, mm-hmm. but the, the Bell's palsy, you really can't tell, right? You can't. All right, I think we found it. 
Joey, thanks to my great fucking moderator, Andrea Brower. Okay. It's that gif of the person trying to figure out the complicated equation. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. him like 30 times an episode. All right. So now John's found this bit. And this bit is from 1992. All right. It's, it's 30 years old. And so John has to explain to his audience, there might be words being used in this bit that aren't acceptable anymore. All right. Okay. Because, listen, we need some trigger warnings here. I don't know if there's going to be like an R word, an F slur. Whoa, whoa. I know. <laughs> don't even think about what I'm trying to say here, people. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> now, let me tell everybody. Now, first of all, don't forget, people, this is in the, this is in the 80s and early 90s. And yeah. this is when some of the words you're going to hear in those days were acceptable. Now they're not. And you know what, Joey? I get this shit all the time. Yeah. Do you know why you get this shit all the time, John? Because you're trying to get people's lives ruined for saying retard. And now John's in a soapbox going, I, I mean, I used to use these words too, but that's what comedy used to be. I mean, I, <laughs> those are the rules. Before I was now. woke. Yeah. Like, Go fuck yeah. yourself, John. You fucking asshole. And then they explain that this is Howard's favorite bit. John interrupts yet again. But uh, but how, it was Howard's favorite bit. And it, oh, you know, I fucking Joey, I fucking laughed my ass. I'm like, who the fuck knew to goof on Bob Ross? I'm like, yeah, because he wasn't <laughs> even in my like. I knew who he was, but he bought yeah. the fuck out of me. Yeah, I could set it up. I mean, I, I don't want to give the bit away too much. No, 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 no. I'm just gonna play it. I, all right, go ahead. Go ahead, and then we'll talk about it. So the guy's trying to say, like, yeah, it's the reason why I got on Howard's radar because of this bit. I did it to kind of... No, 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 I liked the bit. Right. I'm the one who liked uh, the bit. John, okay, I you get credit. I don't like... Joey is saying, I don't want to give the bit away, meaning, like, I don't want to give away my material, like, on air. Like, well, it's usually actually, something you want to save for a I'll, show, I'll right? put it in context, Chris. He said he's, he hasn't done it in 30 years. He stopped doing this bit. Okay. So I guess, I guess right. maybe it didn't age well. Because he's not, he's yeah, fine. He cycled with, it out then. Yes, he's fine with John playing the bit because John's like, oh, I found it, and, and he was even asking Joey, do you know where this bit is? He's like, I don't know. I did it on MTV in the '90s, and I was in Montreal, and maybe be somewhere out there for that reason. Because Joey's done some TV work, but it's not like he was out in Living Color. You know, you can't just go find these old skits and things with Joey Cola. So thankfully, as we just heard, Andrea Brower found the bit. There's all this build up for it. They're ready to finally play it again. The last time he did this bit was in the early 90s. This is how stupid Andrea Brower is. <laughs> so here is Joey Cola. Is this on Late Night with Jimmy oh, no, Fallon? That's that's, that's, no, that's my Jimmy Fallon set. Oh, so, it does, so it's not That's not Brower? it. That's not it. That's not it. It's, oh, it's not it. Keep playing it. Keep playing it. He's scrubbing it through it. He's going to find it. Yeah. Wait, are you sure? <laughs> Wait, are, are you sure? sure? <laughs> you know what you did? Jimmy Fallon was in high school when he was doing this bit, John. Why would you think he's doing it on Fallon? Uh, wow. Let me keep playing it. Maybe it'll come out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, my moderator never steals me wrong. I'll find it eventually. <laughs> no, you won't. You mean I brought this clip up for nothing? <laughs> so... That is part one of John's last ever beer on the balcony. I'll be doing part two on uh, Saturday. It'll be out on Sunday. All right. because wow, you're really rationing it out. I got to ration it out, Chrissy. <laughs> there was so much to get to in this episode. I couldn't do it all at once. What's funny, though, is like right after this, he goes, I got a good Jimmy Fallon story for you, though. And so he says, uh, Joey tells a story about giving a 17-year-old Jimmy Fallon stage time. And he goes, and Jimmy never forgot it. It's the reason why I was on this night show in 2010 is he just remembered me and he wanted to help me out. And John goes, oh, I have a similar story. So I'm just waiting for John to be the hero. Now, John has two types of stories. One's where he's the hero and one where someone else is an asshole, right. but not him. Where he's the victim. <laughs> so he says, yeah, Jackie and I were hanging out. We ran into an 18-year-old Jimmy Fallon and he came up to Jackie and he asked for advice. And Jackie said, here's some advice. Quit comedy. <gasps> oh. I, I got a, a similar story. Jackie's a dick. Okay. Yeah. It's a pretty good story, John. Wow. <laughs> Fucking prick. <laughs> <It> had it all. <laughs> what an asshole. Who are these podcasts? W-A-T-P.